Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. If you're not subscri subscribed to our YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at YouTube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. That was a quick demo of the sound we'll be making in silence. Actually, there are two sounds, but the bulk of this tutorial will be covering this one. And then at the end, we'll cover how to make this one really quick. It's really simple and straightforward. And I just added that in there to kind of add a different texture uh, to give the sound some more high-end and kind of make it a little bit more interesting. You can barely hear it. It's one of those things that's more of a presence than more of an audible sound in the mix. So I do want to point out that I have uh, some third-party processing on both of these sounds. And they are an instance of Effectrix. And if you don't know what Effectrix is, it's a really cool real-time audio manipulator. So you can hear... Basically, it's a grid, and you can assign any of these effects, any of these effects at any point in time, and it'll play. It'll play with your mix. So right there, it just did the scratch loop, and here, when when it gets there in the linear time, it'll actually do the bit crush. And the vinyl is doing that little glitch down. So it's a really cool effect. If you haven't heard about it, you should check it out. And then I have an instance of the LFO tool doing some sidechain compression. So let me mute these, and here is a initial preset in silent. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drag the polyphony up because that sound kind of has it has a lot of voices and it's big and detuned, so it helps to have more voices and you can play more on the keyboard that way. And then make sure you have sync selected. And we'll only be using part A for the sound, so you don't have to worry about the mix B or anything like that. So in oscillator A1, you don't have to change your tuning or anything, but what you do need to do is take the Q pulse waveform and activate that. And we're going to up the voices to 4, so then when we add the detune, it, it actually adds the effect to the sound. So you can keep the volume up, and you can keep the phase all the way down. And for detune, you're going to want to push that to about 3, or maybe just a little bit above 3. And make sure you uncheck retrig because we don't want a really consistent uh, a really consistent tone with the sound. It sounds cooler and more dreamy if the sound can kind of float and it can kind of change with different hits. So now moving on to the amp envelope, let's actually change the uh, amp decay to about three as well, or just a little bit above it. And I'm going to turn the sustain down a little bit because 10 seems a little, to be a little too much. And for the release, I'm going to drag that up a little bit because the way I played this, it sounds better if I have a uh, little higher release time. And that's all kind of dependent on the playing style. Uh, so if you want to hold this out and do longer chords, then I wouldn't use a higher release time, but it sounds cool with the progression that I played. And so in oscillator A2, I'm going to keep the octave in the note at zero, but I am going to activate the saw waveform, and I'm going to check, I'm going to uncheck the retrig, and I'm going to drag the voices up to eight, because we're going to detune this just like we did the first one to about 3.38, and that gives us uh, this sound. And then turn the phase up to 360 degrees. And that's all for the uh, oscillators. Now in fil the filter, we're going to activate a high pass filter. And we're going to turn the cutoff down a good amount of the ways. And just to around probably 7, 7.5 seven hertz. And I'm going to select the, re I'm going to turn the resonance up to about 7. I'm going to add a little bit of drive just to thicken things up. And I'm going to change it from 24 dB to 12. And I was just adjusting the volume so it doesn't get really crazy loud. And in the master filter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cutoff and I'm going to turn it down to about 12. Thank you. 
I'm going to add a little bit of the key tracking, just maybe to about one. And before I add the effects, I'm actually going to go down to the modulation envelope one, and I'm going to take a cutoff A, B, and I'm going to turn this up to about almost all the way to about seven. So a good way is up. I'm going to turn the decay up to about two. And again, this is modulating our cutoff. So it's adding some character to our sound. And in my original sound, I just used cutoff AB, but we could just use cutoff A. Because we're only using uh, uh, cutoff the filter A and part A. So that wouldn't really affect the sound. But then that's really all we're going to do to um, kind of modulate this sound with the modulation envelopes. I am going to modulate it with the pitch a little bit with an LFO. So I'm going to take pitch A. So if you turn it up too much, you get a really crazy effect. But if you just turn it up just a little bit, and then turn your gain down. So I have the rate set to 116. I have the gain to about 1.7. And then I have the pitch actually at 0.38. And then I turn down the offset a little bit. It's adding a nice kind of a dreamy-ish character that's great for progressive and electro and genres like that. So let's move on finally to the effects and that will pretty much square out this sound and finish it up. We're going to activate the fold back distortion and we're going to set the amount to just over 5 and we're going to take, turn, turn the dry wet down to about 20%. Now turn on your coursing effect, and for the delay, the, the delay time, we're going to choose about 20 milliseconds. And then the rate, you can keep that at 0.61 hertz, or just right around there. And I'm going to turn the depth down to about 40%, just maybe a little under 40%. And then take the feedback. We're going to push the feedback really high on this instance of it. And we're going to actually turn the dry wet low to compensate for that. You can keep the width up or you can uh, change that to taste. And make sure you keep dual mode selected. The dual mode basically acts, activates four stages of coursing instead of two. And that makes the sound thicker. And for the dry wet, we're going to turn that down um, just, just a, to about two, maybe one to two. Actually, like 3.81, just to thicken up the sound. And now we're going to activate the EQ. And you're going to keep it on one pole. And you're going to turn your bass down to about 5.5 dB. And then you can keep your frequency for the bass at 110. And the treble, you're going to just turn down just a little bit to about 7.14, 7.07. And you're going to turn the frequency down to about 1,333. And now for the delay, we're going to use the delay to make this more of kind of have it give it that dreamy sound. For the delay left time, we're going to do one thirty second. And for the delay right time, we're going to do the exact same thing. And then we're going to make sure you have your low cut out. Uh, you can keep it at 3.23. And the same with your high cut. Make sure you have ping pong selected. And you can keep smear at zero, but we're going to spread it. I 
Actually, I'm going to turn the smear up to about two and a half, maybe anywhere around there. So this is actually more of a slapback delay than anything. Because of the really quick uh, delay time, you could even do we could even do one sixteenth on one of them on delay left, for instance. Okay, and then now let's activate the reverb. And for this reverb, we'll be using a good amount of it. So turn your pre-delay down to about sixty-five percent. I'm sorry, sixty-five milliseconds. And on the size, we're gonna do about six. Let's just turn it down a little. The damp will turn up to three point around three, give it a little bit more color. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. And for the compression, I'm going to turn the ratio to about just a little bit. We'll, we'll do one above 3.88. We'll do 3.96 to one. And we'll turn the dB down just a little bit. And we want to keep it at a short attack time. So from 12 to 15 would probably sound best with this. I'm just going to turn the release up a little bit to about 191 milliseconds. And then adding just a little bit of portamento to it. And here it does when you jack it up to 10. Sounds terrible. But just a little bit so then there's some glide in between the notes. Okay, so that is the main sound that we heard in the demo, and then I wanted to run over this sound really quick. What I basically did was I just active, I, I created a new instance of um, this sound that we made. I'll just do it real quick. And then I actually just turned, I selected part B and hit solo. And then all I did was take an instance of the Q pulse. I turn the voices up. Just to give it that little extra push with the sound. It's kind of giving it that high-pitched uh, feel, and I might actually boost the EQ on it. And turn up the reverb. And that is pretty much the sound, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out silenttutorials.com, head on over there. There is a good amount of tutorials up now and some presets and some cool just tips and tricks on silent. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.